Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe. We also have some buildings on campus by the world famous Helmut Jan and Rem Koolhaas and maybe soon to be famous John Ronan who just finished the Kaplan Institute. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm doing great. It's a cold Chicago winter day. Today when I woke up it was it was in the single digits. It was four or five degrees. Today's video is going to be on data visualization. And we're going to look at a few visualization tech techniques within Grasshopper, bar graph, pie chart, quick graph. Those will show up in the definition. And then we also want to look at how we can start to develop a strategy for, for visualization outside of the Grasshopper canvas and inside of Rhino. And that's what you're looking at right here. Uh, and we have a bonus animate slider that I'm going to show you. Um, since I have this example on the left here in Rhino, I can uh, go ahead and just show you what that does. So this is something we're going to look at. So there's some values that are being plugged in, and it's changing those circles, how, how full of a circle it is, what color of the circle it is, and also the text that goes along with it. So we'll, we'll get there. Okay, before we jump into the tutorial, just want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. And once you have subscribed, go ahead and click on the little bell to receive all of the notifications. Also, connect with me on Instagram at my first name underscore my last name. Once you connect with me on Instagram, you'll see what I've been up to with recent videos, but also what I'm up to with my students and what kind of things that we're doing. So I'd love to connect with you there. All right, let's let's jump into today's topic. All right, let me go ahead and shut off. This is what we're going to be creating. I'll go ahead and shut all that off for now. Okay. All right, so to create some values here, I'm going to use a random numbers, uh, random capsule rather. Okay, so that's my my random capsule, and I will plug the random capsule into a panel just to get some values. You see, by default, there's only a single value. Well, we want several values there, so let's go ahead and. Just create a number slider with 10 values. So I'm going to use 0 less than 10. Okay, so now I have a number slider from 0 to 10. Okay, so now we're getting some values there. Are being, those values are being populated in the panel. Okay, so let's look at a couple of the um, visualization techniques inside of, inside of Grasshopper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the Display tab in Grasshopper. And under the Display tab, we have Graphs. And we'll start with a bar graph. And we'll go ahead and we'll plug this data in. Okay, so now with the random values, they're organized randomly. There is no organization like ascending or descending order or minimum, maximum. We can't really see that within here. But this bar graph gives us some helpful information. It is giving us a minimum value. So we see that right there, the 0 0.019, and it's also giving us a maximum value. So that's one thing a bar graph uh, can be helpful with. Another thing is if we're, if we're using this tool for design and design iteration, this graph can start to show us some information that might help us with design. 
So for example, if I add a seed number slider and I'm just going to double click and type 10, that's going to give me that's going to give me a number slider from 0 to 10. I want something a little larger, so I'm going to double click and type 11. That will give me one from 0 to 100. And I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the seed. So that seed, what it's doing is the seed is shuffling the values around. And we can see that happening in the bar graph. So as a, as a designer doing some generative design, maybe I'm using this bar graph to see some interesting things that are happening here. Okay, so let's look at the next graph, which we're going to choose the pie chart. Okay, and I'm going to plug those same values in. And I'm going to make this pie chart bigger. Okay, so you see we get this nice colorful chart. And, okay, so what's a pie chart? A pie chart is going to, going to make pieces of the pie larger if, in this case, if I had matching values. So if I had two of these values, that would be larger. So this example is not a great one to show you how, how the pie chart might work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a panel next to it and I'm just going to type in some values. So I'm going to put uh, a few twos in there, some single values, three, five, seven. I'll put several nines in there. And how about a 10? And then we can see what that looks like. Now, I'm going to get an error if I plug this into the pie chart because this has to be what's called multi-line data. Okay, so now you see a little bit more of how the pie chart would work, how you would expect it to work. So I had several two values, so that portion of the pie is bigger. And I had several nine values, and that portion of the pie is bigger. Go ahead and plug this one back in. And again, I can use my C to see different values. Now, another one that works within Grasshopper, another visualization tool, is a quick graph. Go ahead and drop that. So this can be even more helpful in terms of visualization because what this is doing is it's showing me these values that it's showing me the way they're organized in the list. So we have a value that is whatever that value is and then the values drop down and they rise back up, drop down, and they rise really high and then they drop back down. So that is you know, essentially a drawing of this list. You see the value number 5 gets higher there, 0 0.8, so that's that spike. And then it drops all the way down to a value of 0 0.06. So again, as a designer, I can shuffle this seed around and look for a graph type that I think would be interesting in terms of whatever design I'm, I'm creating. Okay, so those are the visualization techniques in Grasshopper. And if you're like me, maybe you saw these graphs here and just never really experimented with them. So maybe this will encourage you to do that because I think you can have a lot of fun with those and they can give you some useful information. Okay, so let's now move forward and look at a visualization technique that is going to show up in, in Rhino for us. Okay, so... At this moment, I have seven numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm going to be using this because this is this is something that's parametric. I'm gonna uh, array several circles. So each circle that I create in Rhino is gonna represent one of these values. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm going to make a an array and I'm just going to choose a rectangular array and the geometry that I'm going to uh, actually I want a linear array so go ahead and create a linear array and I'm going to make a circle go ahead and plug that in okay Make a circle with a radius of 2. Okay, 
So let's talk a little bit about this. So I want these, I want these circles closer together. I want them basically to that the tangent points match. So I need to move it in a distance that is twice the radius. So that'll give it the diameter. So the diameter, the diameter is essentially the distance that I'm going to be moving it. So I'm going to use multiplication. Go ahead and plug that in. And I'll be multiplying by 2. Now since, since that is going to be a constant, the multiplying by 2, like my radius might change. So that's a variable. But the constant is going to be the radius times 2. So for that, I'm not going to use a number slider. I'm going to use a panel. And since it's since it's only one value, I don't have to make that uh, multi-line data. And I'll just drag this to be as small as possible. Okay, so where does that go? So that's going to go this direction that I have here. It's both distance and direction. So I'm going to need a, uh, an x is my direction. Okay, so now distance is this number slider times 2 and in the x direction. Okay, go ahead and plug that in. All right, so that's starting to work. And now my number of circles should always match the number of values. I should probably just move this down here. Okay, let's kind of clean this up for you guys. All right. So the count is always going to be the number of values. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in just to keep that from crossing behind. Okay, so there you go. All right. Okay, so now we've got to look at using these circles for, for some visualization. The first thing I need to do is turn these into surfaces. And if I use a boundary surface, which is Rhino's version of planar surface, that becomes a trimmed surface. And with this technique, we're going to be doing a divide domain, or not a divide domain, but a construct domain. And if you do a, a divide domain or a construct domain on a trimmed surface, it will untrim the surface. So it'll take a circle and turn it into a rectangle. And if you, if you if watched my bounding or my morph box video, which I'll put a link to at the end, it explains that in more detail. Okay, so what I will do to make this a, a uh, an untrimmed surface is I will go ahead and extrude it. And there is an extrude to point. Okay, so each one of these here, each one of these circles, I'm going to go ahead and extrude it. And then the point that I'm going to use is going to be the center point of the circle. And the way that I'm going to get the center point of that circle is I'm going to use an area capsule because an area capsule has what's called a centroid output. And that's going to be my point. Okay, so now you're seeing those surfaces being created in, in Rhino. Okay, and there you see that it's untrimmed surface. If I use a boundary surface, I just plug those in. Those are trimmed surfaces. So a trimmed surface won't work. We need untrimmed. Okay. All right, so let's look at how we can control what this circle looks like so that it opens and closes like you saw in the beginning of the tutorial. So for that, I'm going to use a construct domain. And it's a two-directional. Two Okay, in the in the U and the V. So I'll choose that. Uh, let's see what else do we have. That's not the one I'm looking for. So construct domain. Okay, here it is. The U and the V. So both of those are labeled with the same name, but I want the one that is uh, from four numbers. Okay. So it's four inputs. It has a U min and a U max, a V min and a V max. Okay, and I'm also going to bring out what's called an iso trim. Okay, and the 
the surface that I'm going to divide is from the extrusions. I'll go ahead and plug that in. And these are going to, this is going to be the domain. Okay, so you start to see, if I zoom in, you start to see that circle that I'm looking for there. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and just uh, input some numbers into this domain to see what, we're, what we have here. So uh, it should be between 0 and, and 1. I haven't reparametized the surface yet, but let's take a look. Let's see this value is 0, this one is 1. Okay. So right now it's whatever units I'm working in, which is probably inches. So this is between 0 and 1 inch. Now if I reparametize this, if I right click on that surface input and choose reparametize, it's setting that surf surface from 0 to 1. So let's see, let's, let's start with this one. So 0 0.5. Let's see if this gave me a number slider from 0 to 1. Yep. Okay, we'll plug that into the VMAX. Okay, so there you see, let's select that so it's a little easier so it's in green. Okay, so opening and closing that up from 0 to 1, that's great. I can also adjust the size of that so that it's more of a, a thin sliver. Okay, so let's let's take this, let's get values for all four. Don't necessarily need it, but make this zero for right now. Copy and paste that, make this one. Okay, so there now you start to see that thickness. Okay, and let's get one out for let's just copy and paste that. Okay, so now we have all four inputs. Okay, so <clears throat> it doesn't have to start at zero, right? It could start later, but we'll, we'll keep that starting at zero, and then this will open and close it there. And then this will control the thickness of that, so whatever thickness that you like. All right, and let's go ahead, and I'm going to turn off this one. All right, so probably want to turn off, at this point, I want to turn off everything but that surface. So I'm going to select that. Shift Control I selects everything else. Then Control Q is a shortcut for the preview off. Um, but I have some things that are on. So I have some things that are already turned off. So Control Q will turn things on that are off and things that are on, uh, things that are off on. So in lieu of that, I'm just going to choose Preview Off. Control Q is a great shortcut, but it has its its faults. <laughs> okay. All right. So now, right now, this is not representing any of the values from the from the random. It's just working with just working with this number slider. So we've been analyzing the val the the values that are coming out of this random. Let's move the panel down here. Also. So we want these values to be represented. So we'll take the random, plug it into the V. Okay. All right, so let's see what we have here. All right, so now we can shuffle the seed around. Okay, so now, you know, how can we make, in terms of a data visualization tool, how can we make this more meaningful? Add some colors and add some text. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out a color swatch and a custom preview. Plug that in. Okay, so I, by default, that's just assigning all the colors to this default Pepto Bismol, and you see that this will this will also control the color as well. Okay, but still, they're all they're all the same color. So I want to make this some sort of gradient color. Okay, so to do that, I'm not going to use the color swatch. I'm going to use a gradient. Now I can double click and type gradient, but it's also here from the main tab under parameters under input, you'll see a gradient. 
Okay, and there's some some defaults for the gradient color that we can we can choose from. All right, so I'm just right clicking on it, and I'm going to presets, and I'm going to choose one with some some different colors. We'll look at how to change that in a, in a little bit here. Okay, so we're going to plug that in. And then to control those colors, I'm going to use the same values coming out of the random so that it knows to um, assign essentially seven different values. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Okay. All right, so now you're seeing, um, let's take a look. Let's, let's change this seed. Let's add, let's go ahead and add some numbers to that. Okay, let's take a look here. Right, I just want to look at if I assigned anything here. All right, so these are between 0 and 1. Okay, so let's get some, some text. And we're going to put the text at the center of the circles. And we have this, this centroid to put the text there. So I'm going to use a text, text 3D. Okay, so text tag 3D. And the location of the text is going to be the centroid of those circles. The text itself is going to be what's coming out of the random, the values that are coming out of the random. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And then now we have a lot of decimal places here. Okay, and I don't need to display or I actually don't really have room to display all that text. So what we can do is before we plug it into this text tag, we can round it. And there's a round to decimal place. Okay. And I'll go ahead and plug that in. And the decimal place, let's say I want it to a decimal place of 1. Now I can plug that into the text. Okay. And then I can, I can adjust the size of the text if I want it to fit a little bit better in that circle. Right now the text is 1. So let's do 0.5, that'll get us a number slider from 0 to 1. Okay. Now to even go a step further, that's, that says 0.8, but there's no unit, there's no value applied to that, uh, like inches or feet. So what I can do for that is I can show you a capsule called Format. Okay, and I can use a panel to type in the format. So I'm going to use my, my squiggly brackets and it's going to be zero colon and then my, my decimals. So if I want it to be one decimal place and then I can put IN for inches. Close the squiggly bracket. And I can plug that in the format. Okay, let's see what error we're getting here. Index zero base must be greater than or equal to equal to zero and less than the size of the argument list. Okay, what's happening here? Ah, okay, it's just it needs a value. It needs a value plugged in there. So I'm going to plug in our random values. Okay, now it's good. Just needed values. All right, and then that's going to get plugged into our, our text. Okay, so I should be using the rounded ones. So let me plug the rounded values in, and then this is going to go into our text. Okay, now what's cool about this is that inch is running over, I mean, it's not bad sitting on the circle, but if I want it underneath, I can just add a carriage, just add a return to that, and that's gonna set it below. 
All right, so let's use the sloppiness here. Just so you see that I, I plugged the rounded into the data zero. Okay. All right, so let's let's change the color a little bit here. So if I if I right click on here, I can change the color of that. So I can get some different color range in there. It looks like <clears throat> based on these values, excuse me, <clears throat> that we need more actually need some more colors in here. So if I right click and go to some of the presets, here's one that has more color. So we're getting and then if I you know then I can I can start to move these apart. So you see some of that. I actually like it better. Better with, let's try this one. Those are cool. Also have the you know the much liked black and white one works pretty good as well. All right. Okay, so the bonus for today is going to be the animation of this. How to create an animation of a number slider and then make a GIF out of it. Let's go ahead and shuffle some of these around. Now this this is fully parametric meaning that when I add more or less of these values, I get more or less of the visualization circles. So that's working. Now the range, the range is going to help a lot because you're seeing that you're seeing that I'm getting, oh, Rita did join us today. So there you hear Rita barking at something in the background. Okay, so let's get more range of values here so that these colors vary a little bit more. So right now that range is between 0 and 1. I can right click and I can go to set domain and I can change that. Let's try 5. Okay, so now we're getting more. Oops, sorry, wrong one. And that's what happens when that domain is that was from zero to five. What what happens when it's from zero to point five? So just smaller values. Okay, let's set that back to between zero and one. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna animate this. So I'm going to right click on this number slider, which is the seed. And I'm going to choose animate. Okay, so this, I've set this to be PNGs. That's probably not the default. So you can set it to be bitmap or JPEG, but I like this to be PNG. And you see it's going to take a snapshot of the, of the 3D perspective view here. And you just need to give it a place to um, put these. Okay, I'm going to make a new folder because I think I already have some in there. Okay. Alright, so you have some things like resolution, like this is pretty low resolution, the default 640 by 480, so you can go as high of a resolution as you need to. The frame count is not 30, so it's you know, if I wanted a frame for each one of the units in the number slider, I could put 100 here. I'm just using 30. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click OK. And it's going to animate that, which is pretty cool. And you can make a GIF out of that. So I, I 
did a Google search, I found this easygif.com where I can choose files to upload. And I'm just going to select those. Okay, I can click on upload and make a GIF. Has some options here. I'm just going to go with the default and see what if, if this works with just the default, then even better. Ah, so there's the there's the GIF there. Right. So you, I'm sure you can see the benefit of just the animate number slider. You can do some really cool things with animating some of your your designs. All right. So I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did. You're going to see my head pop up in the upper left. You can go ahead and click on that and, and subscribe if you haven't. If you found the video helpful, go ahead and give it a like below. And I'd like to hear some comments for you. What uh, or comments from you? What what could be a little bit better? How can we add to this conversation on visualization? All right, I will see you next time.